Up next on Line TV, we will have a peek at some of our racing lion runners, a look at our Cersei String Symphony, and a new Lion of the Week with Leo Martinez. All that and more. Line TV starts now. Good morning, Cersei High School. Today is Friday, October 21st. Thanks for joining us. I'm Noah Summerland here with your pre weekend coverage. We'll catch you up on this week's line news, but to start off, here are a few announcements. If you're holding on to your flu immunization packet, please get those turned to the nurse by November 3rd. Cersei High School will be holding a flu clinic on November 14th, and we'll need consent from your parents to give you a vaccine. To our future men's basketball players, the last date to try out for the team will be Saturday, October 29th at 9 o'clock in the morning. To try out, be sure you have a physical and make sure your name is on the list. Next, we'll have a look at Cersei's cross-country team with Sydney to give you a glance at how the season has developed. Fall not only marks the beginning of football and basketball season, it's when all of Cersei's cross-country runners begin season practice to prepare for a race for a state championship. We caught up with Coach Carroll, Andrew Azell, and Blake Nolan with how the team is preparing and an overlook of their season so far. I want you to leave, I want you to go down, we're going to do one box. Follow. Yes, sir. We start out in August running and oh, that runs shorter distances, two to three miles a day, and we, they've increased that to five or six miles when we make our long harding runs. And they've gotten better just endurance wise and strength wise. Uh, to improve, I plan on just doing all of our workouts and increasing our time. Uh, just train hard, keep running even when not in practice. Unlike most sports, our cross-country team has very few seniors. However, Coach has seen improvement from both young men. Yeah, we got two seniors right now. We got uh, Drew Zell and Blake Nolan. They're two seniors and they've really come on this year. They, uh, they did okay last year as juniors, but this year they're taking the leadership role as seniors and they've done very well. Drew and Blake's season has not gone as they would have liked, <laughs> but overall the team season is going great. My season's been decent. Hasn't gone off to a great start, but it's getting a lot better. So far, the season has gone pretty well for the team. There are some ups and downs, but overall, we're doing pretty good. Coach Carroll doesn't have much to do with motivating the team before a race. He leaves that to the captains. Uh, I get hype. I say a little prayer with them and then give them a big pep talk. We usually just get stretched out and just uh, pep talk our team just to get them motivated for the race. It looks like our cross-country team is ready for a great season. We hope everyone's season goes as they want and Cersei will be a contender in the state finals. Back to the anchors. Thanks, Sydney. We'll keep things running along with a few more announcements. Cersei's FCA is inviting all students to attend the ASU game day on Saturday, October 29th. For this $25, you get a ticket to the Red Rules football game, rally, t-shirt, and a meal. All interested students need to fill out and return a permission slip by Wednesday, October 26th. You can get those from Coach Turney in room 117. Whether it's the Armed Forces or Academics, Searcy High School will be administering the ASVAB test, which is a great opportunity to gain helpful aptitude information. This test will take place in the high school cafeteria on November 2nd, but to be a part, you must sign up in the Guidance Center by October 26th. After a short break, we'll have Addison with a look at Searcy High School's own orchestra. Here's Addison with a closer look at Cersei's String Symphony. The Cersei High School 9th grade orchestra is currently preparing for the annual dinner with the orchestra, a night where you can enjoy a tasty meal while having your ears amused by classical music. Dinner with the orchestra is a serious event, but compared to concerts, it is quite relaxed and less stressful. Dinner with the orchestra is not as critical as concerts because at concerts everybody's looking at you and like 
all your their attention is towards you. But at dinner with the orchestra, they're eating, going around, looking at the silent auctions. Some students say that their instructor, Mrs. Guthrie, inspires them to become better, both as players and as people. Every day in orchestra, she just encourages us to try hard and do our best, and she comes in every day with a good attitude. It's just amazing how much growth that we've shown, and she just helps us be better people as better players. This year's selection of music is believed to be more entertainable, both for the students and for the audience. This year's music um, is more upbeat and we all like the music as far as now and playing it is more fun and it's just a lot more fun. It's upbeat, it's bouncy and it really helps us focus a lot more and just make it easy going so we're not distracted. The orchestra wishes that all people come out to support them and have fun. Silent auctions will also be held this night, so you better bring your checkbooks. Back to you guys at the news desk. Thank you, Addison. I am definitely excited to see what the orchestra has in store. Let's send things over to Leo Martinez with this week's Line of the Week. Hello, Sir South School. I'm Leo Martinez. I'm here with you on the week, the one and only Taylor Province. What's up, Taylor? So how do you think your season turned out so far? Well, it didn't go as planned, but we went and played our hearts out, uh, and I feel like we um, could have done better, but, you know, it is what it is. Hey. So what were some of your goals you think you achieved this year? Um, a personal goal I had was to improve my hits, mm. and I feel like I really improved those. Mm. And improving my serves, and for a lot of my games, my serving percentage was 100%, so that's hey, good. That's what's up. So what were some of your challenges this year, and how do you think you overcame those challenges? Um, we had a lot of tough teams in our conference, and I think we played really good against them. Mm -hmm. We played a, a team that we yeah. played last year and we really stepped up and I think we took them on and played our best against them. All right, okay. So high school, when it's over, what do you think our plans after it? Um, I'm going to go to college hey. and I don't know where I'm going yet, but I want to major in dietetics and like food and nutrition. All right, well, what's up? And uh, with the freshmen, how do you think they're going to do? Nice I season. think we have a good group of freshmen coming mm -hmm. up. Um, they have some stuff to learn, but I think they'll do great All right. next season. Oh, what's up? Well, that was Taylor. I'm Leo. Back to the news desk. Thanks, Leo. To keep up with our more recent Lions sports, here's Kent Zarang with the latest Cersei updates. Thanks, guys. I'm here to bring your latest sport announcements for the week, so let's get started. Last night, your Cersei High volleyball team took on St. Joe's at Conway. We don't have the scores for that yet, but we hope they pulled out with a win, considering their lackluster season. Your tennis team went to state conference this week at Jonesboro and did a spectacular job. Nate Villamez and Will Wilkins placed third in doubles, and Reese Rideout and Luke Wolf placed second in doubles. Overall, Cersei received fourth place, so congratulations to them. I'm sure you all know Cersei took on Pine Bluff Zebras this past Friday. We lost 68-28, to but that game did produce some great highlights, which we now have. In a strong early showing of defense, the Lions were able to stop the Zebras from scoring when Jackson Hall picked up a fumble, resulting in a 95-yard run and a touchdown. 30, 20, 10, touchdown, Lions! Cersei took advantage of some extra point opportunities when they consistently ran for two-point conversions, when Mason Shucker ran 10 yards for the two points. Mason Shucker also had an outstanding play when he threw a deep pass to Trenton Turner, which resulted in a touchdown. The Lions were unsuccessful on multiple offensive drives, which helped Pine Bluff win by a large margin. We had multiple turnovers on downs in the beginning, and Mason Shucker threw quite a few interceptions during the course of the game. While we did suffer a pretty bad loss on Friday night, I think we will be able to pull out a win this week as we head to Jonesboro to take on the Golden Hurricanes. Good luck tonight, guys. In some college football news, your number 22 Razorbacks played a triumphant game against number 12 Ole Miss Rebels, winning 34 to 30. This was a great game for the Hog fans, and hopefully we can see some more of this in this week's game against Auburn. Also, Appalachian State destroyed Louisiana Lafayette 24 to nothing. And on Sunday, the new AP poll came out. Your new top five are number one, Alabama, number two, Ohio State, number three, Michigan, number four, Clemson, and number five, Washington. This is the first time Washington's been in the top five since 2000, so we'll see how their season ends. That's all the sport announcements I have for you today, Cersei. Once again, I'm Kent Zarang. Back to the news desk. Thanks, Kent. 
Be sure to cheer on our Lions tonight in Jonesboro. We wish them the best of luck. And with that, we'll wrap up today's show. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Cersei High Lion TV. And if you miss an episode, you can go to CerseiLionPress.com and follow the link to our Lion TV website. Until next time, I'm Noah Summerland. Have a great day and an even better weekend. <laughs>